Hey, Scott. Hey, Steve. Uh, hi, everybody. I uh, hope that wasn't is it me cutting out, uh, but uh, I, I hear you. OK, good, good. Scott sounded a little like it was dragging, so I didn't I didn't know if that was me or what, but uh, could good. have been on his end. OK, perfect. All right. So welcome to the uh, second week when we uh, pick up on the every other Tuesday uh, trade of the week. And uh, we'll just go through a few slides here. Hello, everybody. Hello, all the usuals. Dave, David, Randy. Hello, everybody. Uh, so we'll just get going here. A uh, reminder, disclaimer that um, we are uh, traders. Andy and myself, we trade our own accounts, plural, more than one. And we're also employees of Trade Ideas. So anything we talk about here is really just our own personal opinion of the markets, not to be construed with trade ideas and certainly not to be construed with uh, financial advice. So we'll uh, just carry on from there with that assumption. Uh, a reminder, uh, we have new people coming all the time and uh, we understand that trade ideas has a bit of a, a trade-off. It is a very rich product. But with a very rich product, it's not always the most user-friendly dashboard that pops up and tells you what to do. So we understand that there's a bit of a learning curve to try to get out what you want of trade ideas. That's whether you're a micro scalper, a day trader, a swing trader, whatever you want, you can custom tailor this platform to give you what you want, most importantly, in real time. So with that said, you really want to attend these daily uh, live rooms. Barry's live room is open from the bell to bell. One of us will take over every day at 12 Eastern. I highly recommend showing up for those because you get a, a different flavor with different traders, different groups, different Q&A. Uh, there's always something different to talk about at 12 p.m. Eastern. And then again at 3.30 Eastern, Chris Varley just really, uh, really kind of mops up the end of the day with any last minute needed support. And then we do it all again the following day. So to get to those daily support sessions, you just come down here to uh, the tradeideas.com and add forward slash live, and that'll redirect you to the YouTube live stream. And then once YouTube figures out that you like to watch that, it'll keep serving it to you on the dashboard when we have a live event. Just a reminder, one of our new uh, <clears throat> products coming out and really being pushed and developed and um, uh, created, and I'm going to talk about this. Again, I'm going to show an app applicable approach on how to use the stock racing. I've got something lined up for you to look at today. If you follow me on Twitter, you may have already seen it. Uh, we also talked about it today on the uh, Twitter spaces with uh, Wolf Financial, which has been a pretty pretty good uh, gig. He's uh, been having us on for the power hour every week or so, and we uh, pop in there and talk about some things. So if you're missing those, um, look out for those next time. Uh, we do have an ebook. I, written by our director of uh, development, Dave Mabe. Uh, his, like I said, we've got a lot of different people that work here, and Dave just happens to be our software developer and also a trader. That's what's really great about trade ideas. It's not built by people who think they know how to trade. It's built by actual traders who also are developers, and uh, we have a great team here. So there's an ebook you can download with that website forward slash strategy on how Dave approaches his uh, philosophy and methods to the markets. As usual, we'll start again with the theme that everybody understands that uh, a man and a machine, a human and a machine work best together, not individually. Uh, the, uh, the AI, which didn't have a great day today, uh, just does its thing. It doesn't really have any human interaction. A lot of people that trade off the AI use the AI for signals and then they curate the exit themselves as new information comes in. So it's human and machine working together. If you didn't have a machine, well, you'd just be a human chasing your tail with 8,000 symbols. Uh, you wouldn't know which one to be looking at, and that's where Trade Ideas really helps focus it in. So it's a great symbiotic relationship, and never forget that. So today we'll do a market recap. We've got a lot to talk about what was going on in the markets. Um, two Trade of the Weeks, Tale of Two Tapes, DQ is awesome, VIPs sucked. Um, as promised, I'm going to show you the opening race video and how it was used today in real time. I'm going to update that scan I talked about last week, two weeks ago, uh, that looks for stuff to scan in bear markets. Uh, we'll take a look at that again and see what it uh, spit out today and maybe set some alerts and back test it again. And then again, like I did last week, if anybody has any trading, <clears throat> trading related Q&A stuff, psychological, technical, fundamental, behavioral, crowd psychology, whatever, you know, we're open to those questions. And then we'll always finish off with a couple of chart requests if you want us to look at a daily chart. Um, we're certainly happy to do that as well. So let's go ahead and minimize this and get into uh, the details of what we're going to talk about today. There we go. All right, let's uh, let's bring up the spy. 
And um, again, if you follow me on Twitter, you saw that I made a trade in real time today. I'm going to kind of just start off with that. Um, I noticed something very critical here. And let's just get out the pen and just kind of illustrate. We are still in a current that is flowing this way. And as a swing trader, it's usually easiest to put your canoe and drop it in the river and let the front end point and go downstream and go with the current, all right? So trying to fight and get long on these types of moves, they can work, but not all uh, of them bounce accordingly. But when the market kind of catches itself with lower highs, and I'm gonna clear this out because this is what I caught today. Everything opened up. I, I, was, I was tempted to kind of short the market yesterday, but I said, I wanna wait till today until they all test these 20 day moving averages and kind of see what we get. So, you know, intraday there was the open, perfect typical opening rush and then a reversal all day long. And by the way, look at the uh, adherence to the 10 SMA that I preach a lot about. Broke the uh, five day uh, 130 SMA that I also talk a lot about. So on the daily, I noticed that. And then I saw the queues also. And the queues also failed at their 20 after a nice little bounce. And then the IWM, which I've been playing to the short side, some of you may recall, but using TZA. And I do that because you get much more leverage. You get three times the leverage. You know, uh, iShares were down 1.8. TZA was up 5.6% today. So I was leaning on, as I always do, the underlying ETF, not TZA, but the underlying ETF failing along with SPY and the NASDAQ and the Qs right there. So I tweeted and I told Andy and told the guys here, I took a position in TZA. All right, I took my entry position in TZA. Um, then midday, I added to it. Anybody care to guess where I added to it? Um, for those of you that know me, this is where I like to add, okay? You don't want to be chasing green bars. Just wait and see what happens after consolidation. But the minute it pulls back and touches the uh, 10 SMA on my 15-minute chart, that is going to confirm or deny whether or not the momentum is still intact. And so it bounced off there, and the minute that candle started to grow green, I trusted it, and I added uh, the second third. I had two thirds, and I added a, a last third. Now, I'm just going to kind of hang on to this um, because I really don't want to be long anything um, at the moment. I just feel like as a swing trader, you know, yes, you can find some long day trades, but usually they don't, they don't last very long. Um, so we are definitely in a bear market. Actually, technically with this close today, I think we're back down in a bear market territory again. But the real thing that we have to pay attention to is, is this channel that we're kind of in right now. And um, I'm gonna pull out, uh, we were on Spaces today and it was nice to hear some confirming uh, target points with some other people looking at the same thing. They say, and I say, and Andy says, you know, when you need to look at the bigger picture to kind of see where we are, you gotta go and look at the weekly. You can never discount the weekly. And this one really gave us an early telegraph back here when it broke all the averages that it was holding since COVID low, bounced up two rejection weeks right there. All right, and then another attempted bounce. This is everybody buying the dip because they were conditioned to buy it. And then two more rejections at the 20 SMA. Now the 10 SMA on the weekly has a hold of the weekly candles in the SPY. So, you know, this is the 200 weekly SMA. And we have not even touched that since COVID. Matter of fact, some people look back and we haven't touched the 200 weekly since the housing crisis of 2008. So I firmly believe that uh, relative you know, to the SPY, I'm gonna hold on to this, try and hold on to this TZA until SPY get down to the 350 area or Qs get down to the uh, 263, 264 area. But in my underlying, we've already broken the 200. So I picked the weakest of the bunch for a reason. It's already broken. The IWM Russell 2000 has already broken the 200 week moving average. And now it's just looking like the weakest of them all. And I'll try and ride this down maybe to some new lows down here and call it a good trade. I've had some really good luck in the last couple of months trading the TZA moves um, that we've been getting. Again, that's a weekly chart. Anything you'd like to add, Andy? No, no, I totally agree with you, Steve. And uh... I wouldn't go as far as saying that uh, the, that 200 weekly on the spies is going to be a bottom itself, but <clears throat> but I, it, who knows? We maybe maybe we don't even make it there, but uh, it just feels, man, it just feels like it uh, definitely has a date there. And like I said, probably should get a bounce there, but I, I don't know if it's a bottom. There's every reason to think we'll get a bounce there because if you look left, mm -hmm. you got this pivot, you got this resistance support level. So these 
combine yeah. to create kind of a double confirmation that Why don't you draw a little orange target. line there from the okay, let's do software that. and see how it marries up. Yeah. So 200 day right there. And I yep. will grab the line, mark up horizontal. Yep. There you go. Up. Rejection, rejection, and then blast <laughs> through it. So this is what we would call a pivot point. Again, this is a weekly time frame. So we're really backing up here. Remember where everybody was when they were closing everything down and people were scared? You know, that was way back here. We've given, gosh, I wish we kind of wish we had Fibonacci. I wonder what the Fibonacci retracement would be on that too. It looks like uh, we've blown through the 31%. Yeah. It almost, almost looks like it'd be like half, a half, 50%. Close. I think it's a little bit lower than that. Maybe, yeah, but. Uh, yeah. Maybe if somebody has a yeah. weekly Fibonacci out there on the SPY, if it's within a few points of the 350 for 50% retracement from the move from low to high, that would be very curious. Yeah. Now, okay, just for uh, grand, Steve, put it on the monthly, and and because I kind of want to show guys, don't be surprised if it's because uh, I've been I've been thinking, you know, 40% is is not out of the question at all. And it, 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 on the grand scheme of things, and when you look at where we've come from. Uh, you know, a move down to 300 would not, you know, would not surprise me. Uh, it's just, I mean, I know, I know when you calculate it from highs and thinking, oh, wow, that's a huge pullback. I don't know if I can stomach that. But in the grand scheme of things, and you look where we come from, you know, uh, in the last 12, 13 years, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be shocked. But, well, speaking of in the bigger scheme of things, we have even kind of maybe another thing lining up here, mm -hmm. right? This monthly 50. Mm -hmm. This monthly 50 might be coming into play, you know, in right the at that same area. So, yeah. Right at that same area that we've drawn already. So yep. interesting. All right. So yes. that's, that's my thinking on uh, my short sell using I, TZA as a proxy. I've got a full load. I'm going to try and ride it out for a couple of days and see if uh, there's any panic. My only concern, quite honestly, is the Fed panics, freaks out, and finds a microphone and re tries to reverse it on me. But again, I'm just going to end with no, what I, I started with. Fine, no, I'm not sure that's going to work anymore. <laughs> but, I'm going to end with what I started with. You know, point your canoe in the river and let the let it point downstream, and then follow that flow. Yep, if you go against you go. the current, this is when you're paddling hard like a maniac here against the current, trying to go long. In my opinion, so this will dovetail nicely with what we're going to talk about a little bit later in the scan. Um, as far as the AI goes, horrible day. There's only one profitable trade filtered out here. Really nothing to talk about on there. Um, so what we're going to move to, I believe, is a trade of the week. Let's see. Oh, wow. Randy says that 50% level uh, hits the uh, Fib, uh, horizontal, horizontal line. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Wow. Thank you, Randy. That's a pretty good eyeball yes. on there on our part. And mm -hmm. thank you for the confirmation. All right, so let's go back to the daily. Let's talk about the trades of the week. Uh, DQ was our first trade of the week. I still have the signal line in there at 60. This is what it looked like when it was called. There. So our signal line was to break above the 50 and the 10 SMA did so very quickly, gave us wonderful volume confirmation. And if you're using the 10 SMA as a guide, I certainly wouldn't have blamed you if you sold half. I think I sold half pretty quickly. Um, and then I got out of the other half pretty quickly. So I certainly didn't ride um, the complete move, but um, there was a really nice move from what are we going to call this? 60 up to 70. That's a 20% that's a move right there. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. for, it was for a nice two. one. It's just a matter of how you play it. And my job and Andy's job is to try and at least get us something that we can play in, which brings us to something that did not work out very well. VIPS, um, our signal line uh, trapped everybody. You know, it could have easily consolidated and moved higher. But again, this was a China place. So I'm going to bring up K-Web. The whole concept is pretty much predicated off of this, you know, looking nicely and gathering some steam for a possible push higher. But wouldn't you know it, we got a big old overnight gap and then they just sold the gap in K-Web, which translates to a Chinese stock like VIPS, the same thing. Uh, one good note that Andy pointed out is um, uh, we're not in it, but uh, it could have easily bounced at the 20-day the and held. But considering the action that we had in the backdrop today, uh, it just it couldn't hold it. So this trade has stopped out. It uh, was a loser. Um, but hopefully it wasn't too big of a one. And it really does come down to just uh, managing your trades as best you can, trying to take profits uh, when, when everybody's buying. And you know, don't don't try to be the person that waits for this big red candle and sells on the close. You know, as it makes new highs and, and rips higher with big green bars, take a quarter off, take another quarter off. That's really the best way to try and maximize uh, your profits. Mm -hmm. And go back to that, go back to that FIPS. You know, sometimes guys, it's just luck of the draw. So. I mean, look at look how it's been uh, holding up over the last uh, man, three months. I mean, 
<laughs> those are pretty much the two biggest red bars we've seen in the yeah. last two months. So the, the trading you know, got to be cruel. Yes, yes. The the stock was holding up very well, very strong. One of the strongest on the on the boards over the last three months. And uh, yeah, just uh, yeah, Steve's right. The trading it was time for a rotation. It was just time for rotation, yeah. and we yep. we missed it. <laughs> Yep, and I wouldn't be surprised, you know, two weeks from now, this is back over that highs from yesterday. You know, just the way uh, that's just the way it happens sometimes. All right, so this is a really good segue into what we're going to talk about next. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and click the heart on this chart. What does that do? What does the heart do? Well, it adds that symbol to my liked symbols. Now, if you don't know how to get my liked symbols, um, there, there's a couple ways to do it, but the easiest way is to just go to um, the channel bar, just open up a new channel bar. And uh, I'll visually show you guys. Um, what am I looking for again? My light, looking for the big heart. This one right here, stocks I like. I'm not going to click on it, but if you click on that, you'll get a top list window that says my light. And so all you have to do is just you know right click and save that to your cloud and open it up. So every day, I mean, I've got, I probably want to clean this out here sometime soon, but you can see I got a lot of stuff going on here. And all of this is on here for a reason. Well, some things uh, I want to watch for pullback, some things I just want to watch for relative strength, et cetera, et cetera. But um, notice uh, ESTE today, let's talk, talk about relative strength, my God. And I think we've talked a lot about uh, <clears throat> pro gaps too in the past. So, you know, ST came on my radar today via the stock race. And I'm going to show you how it was a immediate, immediate confirmation that it was something uh, I wanted to be in. And um, so there's our pro gap coming out of a downtrend. And what I did was, I'm gonna just grab the video here and pull it up. Again, it's in my Twitter feed, but um, I started off by um, showing my, uh, let's mute that. Okay, so I started off by showing, you know, this is my watch list. Um, I'm gonna change from the open. I wanna see which stocks are holding their gaps on the open. So the market just opened, and I'm showing in real time here as we go through it that it didn't take long um, for this um, ESTE to start jumping out. It's not a very long video. I'll just fast forward a little bit here. There it goes. So here comes ESTE and I'm pointing this out now. Ah, oh, look at that. So I pull up ESTE, there's the chart, there's the opening, it held the gap. This thing was uh, coming through at you know, 15 and a half, 1560 even earlier. Um, it was up 2%, you could see from the opening bell. So immediately what the point is here, rather than trying to just decipher this um, grid, this spreadsheet view with maybe some colorizations, this really does stand out a lot better than this, doesn't it? I think everybody would agree. And so that got me very interested in, in uh, EST very early because it was holding its gap and definitely relative to the others on my watch list was doing pretty darn well. So that's the uh, the beauty of using the um, stock races. And again, all I did was I ran a race right at the opening bell using my watch list. So I just showed you guys um, how you can create your own my liked symbol. So now ESTE and the others that I just we clicked on a minute ago, I forgot which symbol it was, but it's now on my watch list. And I'll do the same thing tomorrow when the bell rings. I'll right click, I'll launch a real time race. And uh, we have the maximum capability of 20 cars or 20 symbols now. Now they're not cars anymore, they're actual symbols and logos. And I'll say, uh, I want change from the open, okay? And um, if I always want the ones that are the strongest to be up top, I'll do server sort. I did not do that in the video. I wanted to make it you know, more stand out, which ones were standing out among the rest. If you want it to be like that, um, I'm sorry, server sort is the way it was in the video, delta value, that will show you which ones are the strongest and they'll be moving to the top. You'll have a nice symmetrical little uh, curve there. And then um, replace cars, meaning, uh, let's see, it'll be a, make a five minute race. So in the first five minutes of the opening bell, this is gonna show me out of the, up to 20 cars, which ones, uh, 20 symbols, which ones are relatively holding their open the best. And it's a very, very good tool for an early look. If you're a day trader and you're trying to find something in this case, you know, this was a pro gap and I immediately recognized, oh, that's very interesting. You know, the um, stock races aren't always gonna tell you that, but you have to pull these things up individually and kind of confirm with your eye that maybe you do like what you see here. So I thought that was a very valuable real time example of how, you know, we're using the races. And I'll just say this again, when these things first came out, Andy and I, you know, being dinosaur traders that read charts and keep it pretty simple, we were like, 
okay, what's this? And how would I use it? And we were kind of skeptical at first, but it literally has grown on us. And especially Barry and Chris and some of the other day traders, Andy and I, myself are more swing traders, but we definitely see the value in it now. And we believe in the, you know, the vision that, that Dan has, why he's been pushing this uh, like he has to get it developed and get it out to, to the market. So anything you want to add on that? Mr. Lindlaw. No, no, totally, totally agree with you. Uh, I, I do ver something very similar. I'm, I'm, uh -huh. Guys know that I've been basically just following China stocks pretty much for the last six weeks. And uh, uh, so I have my China watch list, uh, which has a lot of stocks on it. And I do the same thing in the morning. I fire up a race, uh, very similar uh, parameters as, as Steve uh, has metrics as far as a change from the open. And oh boy, it can really call it TME. Look at TME today. That was for, that was the one out of the blocks. And uh, Okay. Yeah. Oops. A little bit of a reversal there, late day, but no, uh, well, yeah, a lot of things, doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> day trading, 487 out of the blocks. You're alerted at 490. Mm -hmm. The 490, uh, you're selling some along the way. I mean, geez. Yep. That's, that's, sure. That's a day Great trading movie. right there. The first two hours mm -hmm. of the day just fade out of new highs. Yeah. Okay. So, um, oh, good question, Mark. What indicators do I usually use? So, um, let's go back to the daily. All right, and I'm using uh, four simple indicators on the daily. I've got my 200, my 50, which is my general barometer of health. And I remember doing a TikTok video two months ago, highlighting back here on April 15th, uh, we have problems in the market, watch out below, be careful. And I said, because we've got this giant congestion field under the 50 day moving average. And this is my general health of a market, an index, a stock, what have you. The 50 SMA is key. The 20 SMA, I call the backstop. In this case, it was the backstop from the 10 SMA. You can see the 10 SMA is the momentum. So I call the 10 SMA the momentum, call the 20 the backstop, and I call the 50 the general health. And you can see we broke down in oversold conditions and popped up here on some lighter volume. And we broke through the momentum line and the backstop caught us on the downside. This is why I shorted the market today because we got caught up on the downside. The, in, on the backstop. For my intraday, uh, I'm using the 10 SMA, as you can see. Yes, Mark, I do use, I use the anchored view up a lot. Um, I'll show you that in a second. So the 10 SMA just all day long confirms that momentum is, was staying in, to the downside. And then you can see the five day moving average. This is literally 130 minutes, 100, excuse me, 130 periods. All right, so you just take an SMA on a 15 minute chart, plug in 130 periods and you'll get this smoothed out five day indicator. And you can see how we fell below it, tried to come back up and then literally had a convergence right there of both of my favorite indicators on my 15 minute chart. And that kept me very confident that it's gonna stay short here, nothing to do. And uh, so if you, were, if you were short today, that gave you a lot of confidence in that failure right there in the little armpit. So those are the indicators I use there, Mark. You wanna add something or? No, no, I'm sorry. I wasn't yeah. on mute if you're hearing anything. Uh, VWAP, I've got this other indicator over here, this other chart, all right? Um, and um, I'll use it sometime. I'm actually long this APPH. I'm long a couple things. And APPH, uh, there's a story there. This is uh, indoor farming and water and all sorts of uh, really interesting new technology as the news of farming and agriculture. The shit really starts to hit the fan. Um, I think there's a story here to be had. I'm in the money and I'm just gonna sit in this guy. But I'll take a I'll take anchored view up every now and then and say, okay, well, where is the anchored view up from this high back here? I'll say, oh, okay, that's interesting. We, we kind of challenged it today, but uh, we haven't really um, kept on uh, closed above it. We did a couple of days ago, but we're still fighting it here. Then I could add another anchored view up and say, what about from the lows back here? Where are we in relation to those? Oh, okay, so we're a little bit of ahead of ourselves here, perhaps. Um, you know, where is it in relation to the uh, the year to date VWAP? That's always an interesting one. Uh, it would be right there. Okay, that one. Right at okay, it, pretty that, much. That right at it. Okay, so that one uh, is where our resistance came in. That's the top one right there. So today, actually, I was talking to Brian Shannon about this and he was showing me as well. He's the master of the anchored VWAP. So the last couple of days, this anchored VWAP mark uh, came into play. So I'm definitely using it on just longer term perspectives. I don't use it intraday, but I have this separate chart behind that one with a little bit of RSI on there. Um, by the way, this kind of a nice little bullish diversion mm -hmm. there on RSI, but I'm just gonna let this one play out as long as it, let's go back to this. I told Brian this, I said, look, I don't really care about what's happening intraday. 
as long as the 50 day, i.e. the general health, as long as it remains above the general health line, I'm staying in this thing because a lot of times I'm early to a story. I mean, I'm not bragging, I'm just actually lamenting it because I get into it and I get out too early. So there's no reason to get out of this one as long as it stays above the 50. All right, so good questions there, Mark. Let's check in, um, we got 15 minutes or so, with a scan that I um, created um, last week, to, uh, last month, but I, I demonstrated it two weeks ago. And so since we're talking about that 50 day, the general health, this is my scan that uh, showed every stock that was um, meeting my criteria and hitting the 50 day SMA. What is my criteria? Um, stocks between, well, let's just look at the filters. All right, uh, price between 10 and 250, that's optimized. Back testing told me that. Change from the 50, this is the money filter right here. Positive 10th of a percent above, negative 10th of a percent below the 50 day SMA. Show me a new high, things that are coming into from the underneath. It might be getting ready to run out of steam so that I can maybe think about shorting them. Um, change in the last two days has to be at least uh, 2%. Um, the S&P has to be at least flat or higher, can't be negative on the day. So all tides lifting all boats into that moving average. Um, before I show you them, let's back test it quickly. We back tested it um, two weeks ago and it was showing a pretty darn good swing trading strategy hold for like three day short hold. All right, so I'm optimized. I'm on the West Coast, so 1030 Eastern. We're not looking at anything for the first hour. We're letting these things come up. And again, that's optimized based on the back test. The hours of the day told me your best sweet spot are these Pacific time hours here. Exit, we're going to hold for today plus three days. Risk management, we're going to risk, risk 2% to try and make 7%. And let's just do what we did last time. Let's check the last uh, 30 days here. So we simulate the cell and the system will now go in and say, every time one of those stocks came out, like it did here, what would happen if today plus three days from now, we shorted every single one of these names? What would, what, what would we expect? And this is what would we would expect. Um, notice the 55% winners doesn't mean anything, okay? Because the win percentage and the pro I mean the profit factor is so high. The average winner above the average loser is so uh, so much uh, discrepancy and contrast. You know it's a 390% annualized return just doing something like this on only 120 trades. So that's a pretty solid uh, strategy. And the reason I do this is you want to continually backtest these things to know hey are they still working? This thing could have easily on the equity curve rolled back down and stopped working, but it's not. It's continuing to work. This is the fresh data over here. All right, with that said, let's go through now and see how some of these symbols marry up to the daily. Oh, look at this, I love this one already. Okay, so SU, there is our new high, just exactly what the market did this morning. It popped up on the intraday, but wouldn't you know it, on the daily it kissed the 50 and retreated. So, you know, and this one's kind of holding up. So what I'm gonna do here, um, do I wanna set a bunch of alerts? I guess we do. So I'm just gonna get rid of all these. We'll create some alerts here. I'm gonna drop in uh, right there, right at, right at 36, and pop in a price alert for the short side. And I will share these alerts at the end. So everybody will have, yes, yeah, so, and of course I will share this scanner, Juan. I would never tease you guys with something and not share it. So that's the first symbol right off the bat. We just back tested this thing. We know it's a great three-day swing trade short. SU did exactly what we asked trade ideas to tell us, show us in real time when it came up and kissed the 50 SMA. Well, this has been a nice little dead cat bounce. This thing might be ready to roll over. So we'll set an alert. Uh, this one, not so much because it kind of came from above. I'm gonna, pass on that. I'm gonna pass on that, but this one is very interesting. Horrible down move, dead cat bounce, right into the 50 day, three days of rejection. Let's just go ahead and mark this one up. I'm just gonna use simple today's lows. You know, if these things wanna roll over and follow the current, like I mentioned, they should follow through and that's what the back testing is telling us. All right, uh, FRG, eh, not really, I wanna see things that are moving more, not choppy. Well, this one looks like it's ready to give it up. This looks very similar to what the NASDAQ did back here when I was talking about NASDAQ consolidation under the 50. Well, this uh, Jennifer Capriotti here, is uh if you like that one for old school i like that one yeah it's uh really really consolidating and 
being rejected. So we're going to set a price alert here. And that's really it was showing some weakness there because it really didn't take much of a move up with the market. Look at that. No, just kind of right. yeah. yeah, that sideways action and the constant mm -hmm. rejection. If you were long this thing and constantly getting rejected, eventually people are going to start to head for the for the exits. Mm -hmm. Oxy, I think, I think Buffett bought some of this and it showed up. That might have been why it blasted up into it. I don't know if I'd want to be shorting energy right now, but uh, nonetheless, that's on there. Although SU, that one you marked up is an energy, but yeah, is just it? keep yeah, okay. just keep an eye on oil and see what it's doing if you if you short it. Uh, that could be great. I mean, okay, there might be some duplicates in here. Oh, that's a good little nice looking little tail there. What is this? Mm -hmm. Imaging tech. Yeah, this needs to be marked up. Very wicky. Uh, ooh, not a lot of volume. Not a lot of volume. So you got to be got to be careful on this one. I actually might. I'm going to pass on that one based on volume, guys. I don't I don't want to do things that are trading 170,000 shares at the end of the day. You need a little bit more than that. Exxon Mobil is going to look the same as Oxy. Uh, sheesh, that's another good looking chart, but we'll just keep SU for now on the uh, on the short side list. Picard, ooh, big rejection wick today. Uh, another, let's see, automobile light duty. Yeah, this one could have a bit of a fall. This one, oh, and it, look, it gave away that five-day moving average intraday too. We're going to mark mm -hmm. this one up definitely for a short sell. What else? There's Jenny again, VREX. I think we talked about that one. Too low volume. MGNI. Meningitis. <laughs> Meningitis. I'll take that one. <laughs> I'm going to mark this one up. This is interesting. Uh, computer programming, tech, ugly failure. At the 50, although it has given up up, up a lot yeah, already. Yeah. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen this one yesterday, honestly. But uh, so let's just keep away from that one. We don't have many left here. Another uh, industry machine manufacturer. That one's holding up kind of nicely above the 10. I'm I'm scared of shorting that one. And then Chevron CVE. No, it's not Chevron. Another energy, oil and gas. I don't know. We can always do this too, guys. We can go in to see what happened yesterday. See if there's anything yesterday that happened. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would have worked. FL. Oh, that would go back. Yeah, FL, that would have worked nicely yesterday. Foot Locker, mm -hmm. retail, big rejection yesterday. Um, that AMCR thing looks pretty good. Uh, that, that could be interesting because it has a nice move, yeah, but it's yeah. holding. Let's mark that one up just above you today's lows as something else to watch for tomorrow. And guys, as I'm finishing up here, you're welcome to send in, um, and yes, I will, I promise I'll, I'll share everything here, but you're welcome to start putting in some questions about trading in general, psychology, whatever, and then also if you want us to look at a chart, you know, we got 10 minutes to go and we'll look at some charts also, but um, see if there's anything else from yesterday on here that might look interesting. That might look interesting. What is this? Financial, not a lot of volume. I'm going to pass on that one. Oh. Truck and trailer manufacturing. That one's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Mark that one up too. How many does that give us? How many does that give us? There's lurks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see if we can find one more. The lucky number seven. Ooh, what is this? Copper rolling. Wait, there's a lot of rejection going on here. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and mark this one up. We'll mark this one up here below the round number and below that five-day moving average just to see if there's anything underneath there. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to share. We'll share the scan first. I'm going to put it back on real time. Again, the if you guys want to start back testing it, my settings are all written, already in there. You can configure it any way you want. So I'm going to share this uh, Subtarshi right now. This is going to be shared with you. Um, Day trading, um, we have some thoughts on day trading uh, scans. Um, I don't know, what's your favorite day trading scan, Andy? Uh, Stream Master Blaster. Okay, well, maybe we'll drop that one in there. I'll for, share it for you. Uh, Subtarshi, too. All right, so here comes the slam into the 50. Now, this isn't going into the chat window, you guys, not, not the question window. The chat window, which is on the toolbar there. Um, slam into the 50 SMA. Is the first one. All right, there's the actual scan. And let's also share the price alerts that we just set. So everything that I just set 
will work for you tomorrow if you have this running with these paired selected price alerts. Copy. All right. Pop price alerts in there. All right. And then, uh, yeah, Andy will drop in a, a day trading scan for you that basically uh, looks for um, price movement with volume confirmation, strong volume and price movement. Those are two things you can't go wrong with when you're trying to focus on some day trading names. All right. Uh, let's answer the, the trading questions first and we'll come back to the charts. Um, Randy, are you highlighting the oh, six of stocks in the coming week? Yeah, I was just highlighting those ones, Randy, and shared them in the um, in the chat window. Those are the ones that we created together. There's really no channel that those would be on. Those were just derived together live. Um, da -da -da. Okay, so we'll just get right into the charts. Again, if you guys have any questions, you can ask. So we'll start with Dave and Costco. One of my favorite places to go and stock up on things. Um, Costco is starting to look a little scared at the 50, isn't it? Uh, it could go either way here. It really could. <laughs> we just don't know. It, it could easily just settle in above the 10 and the 20 and make another attempt on that 50. Or depending upon what retail and the market wants to do, it could easily just uh, be totally repelled by that level right there and could follow through. I really don't know. Um, it's probably going to depend on how the market feels about retail you know, going forward. Well, these things all had a pretty big beat down, Target uh, and Walmart and Costco all at the same time. Um, it looks the strongest of the three of them. I'll give you that because it got closest to the 50. But remember, the 50 is our general health here. So this is our uh, this is our activity zone right here. What's it going to do? Which way is it going to go? Uh, da, 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 Blue Apron, yes, Blue Apron, one of the COVID, COVID darlings. Back when uh, everybody was scared to go out and order food, uh, Blue Apron blew up, but uh, it broke uh, a while ago. And um, let's just take a look here. So currently, I don't know what this news was back here, could have been earnings, could have been something, but it was rejected. Whatever it was with that volume, it was rejected at the 50. It was a big uh, theme that we've got going today. But however, it has since reclaimed it. One, two, three days in a row. The sellers are still putting up a fight, but it has reclaimed the 50. So you definitely have been listening, uh, Tony, and um, I see what you're looking at. I think ideally what you want to see is just like I was looking for that APPH, the agriculture stock. Just stay above the 50 and give me a technical reason to stay in this thing. And um, yeah, it doesn't look that bad. Uh, been long BA did well. How would you approach it for a reentry long? Well, depends on what the financials. Oh, Boeing, I thought that was big America. That's BAC. Wow. So what BA just did here is exactly what we were kind of scanning for today. Um, I would say you don't want to probably be going long because today was the opportunity for it to break above this 142 level and the 50-day SMA and close and hold above it and wave hello with a big green candle. But instead, it gave us the middle finger and got rejected at the 50. So um, I would, uh, the only time I'd look to be going along this thing, which is your question, is if it can post a couple of nice closes above that declining 50 like we just saw over in uh, Blue Apron. So I hope that helps, Lou. Already using the Extreme Master Blaster, it's the best. All right, good job. Well, you're on to the right thing there, Juan. How about Merck? How are these things looking? Just thought I'd look at Pfizer too. Well, this is what the market likes to do, especially we learned uh, in VIPs today or yesterday. Market loved to break out and pretend like it's going to run and then reverse. And when you see those big, long metal finger tailing, trailing candles at a significant level, you've got to pay heed. So for this one, I think the best case scenario is another day of selling, but look at all the support down here. So you're probably going to want to wait and see what happens down here at these levels. You've got a lot, a lot of empty airspace here. Um, so I would wait and watch and see. Ideally, what it would do is it would come down and spike through, and then at the end of the day, pop up and close with a bottoming tail instead of a topping tail here, kind of like it tried to do down here. So we're in no man's land right here. I would wait and see what happens down here at the 89-ish level. 
Uh, is there a way to get your alert window to only list a ticker one time and not multiple times? Uh, yes and no, Randy. In history, no. In real time, yes. And I assume you want real time. So how you do it, it has to be an alert window. And you come to properties. And you come to the don't repeat menu. And you can see I've got don't repeat the symbol for an entire minute. If you really want to slow things down, you can say don't repeat for five minutes. You can do that too. So that's what you want to look for. Right, click the properties and the don't repeat menu. And that will only show you one symbol in real time as long as you're in live mode, no more than whatever you uh, input there, one minute, five minute, et cetera. All right, cool. One more question from Dave, and then we'll bring Scott in, um, BMY. Bristol Myers. Okay, so Bristol Myers broke out. Let's just kind of look at that. That's a really definitive markup. So I think the pivot line is definitely in play here. And just like Merck, if the pivot line doesn't hold from these prior resistance, if that doesn't become support, then you're looking at down here. So that's what I would say for Bristol Myers. If you have a reason to own it, um, see what it does at this pivot line. But you know, I would wait for the close on the day to see because what it can do is it can bounce midday and then it can just give it up at the end of the day. So wait for the end of the day to see what confirmation candle you do get on the daily. Uh, but if it breaks that uh, 78 level, it's probably got a date down here with the 7650 level. All right, guys, that's all we've got. Another good uh, session. Thanks for all the questions. So put the uh, slideshow back up and invite Scott back in. Thank you, Randy. Scott, you're on mute. Scott may have stepped away. So I'll go ahead and just finish us up here. Just a reminder, uh, zero commissions, E-Trade, our brokerage plus connects to E-Trade, and there are a lot of people that are using it, and the interactive brokerage uh, connection does not have commission-free, but E-Trade does. Uh, speaking of interactive brokers, you can use them too, but um, uh, great, great brokerage, but for the auto trading, you still have a, a commission um, that has to be taken care of. And uh, just a reminder, we um, have a promo code. Um, always 15% off is good. Just use F-A-S-T-D-A-T-A. -A. But I'll tell you what, if you guys stick around, we actually have a um, July 4th promo coming up. So, you know, send us a text or a chat or an email if you want that information. Uh, but that information will be coming out soon uh, for a pretty good discount for Fourth of July. Um, somebody asked earlier how to find us. Um, I'm on uh, Twitter. At least this is my new handle since Twitter kicked me off my old handle. Uh, I'll talk about anything on there, but um, there's some good stuff if you want to get some trading ideas on there. I'm also on um, TikTok uh, down here at Today Trader. I do the trade of the week on there as well. And other than that, you know, we've got the typical uh, info at Trade Dash Ideas. Anything you want, start there. That's our hub, and we'll source it out and send it out to the right department so you guys get your answer. All right, thanks again for another good one. Um, this session is being recorded. It will be uploaded probably by uh, early or midday tomorrow, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.